from the far west region four of the USYS National Championship Series. This is a championship match in the girls under 15 category, featuring the SC Blues and the Sereno 94 White. You see both teams lined up there and the center of the field. You see the Sereno 94 White team off to your right and off to your left is the SC Blues. Both these teams have played great soccer to get here. And we will get underway in a moment from Lancaster National Soccer Center. So shift colors for all you sailors out there past and present. Let's get the lineup first for the Sereno 94 White Club. It's going to be the head coach by Paul Lester. The manager is going to be Lyric Nakan. Jen Stewart has been a part of this team. She's double zero. She will not be playing in this game, though. But as keeper in this contest will be Tess Rebick. Number zero will be midfielder Ann Andrews. Number one at defense is Maddie Bradshaw. At midfield, number three will be Maddie Pascali. Number six at defender will be Shelby Olslocker. And we'll stop there as we're about ready to get underway here at the Lancaster National Soccer Center. And we're underway, 40 minutes of soccer here in the girls under 15 category again let's go on with the rest of the lineup as you see left to right is the uh sc blues and they already got a shot on goal and it went over the top of the net the sereno 94 clubs defender will be courtney chong and number seven number eight will be Lucy O'Leary at midfield. Number nine at midfield will be Sydney Tomlinson. Number 10 at midfield will be Ali DeRond. Number 18 at forward is Danielle Leon. Number 21 at forward is Emily Paxton. Number 23 at defender is Katie Nakan. Number 25 at midfield or forward is Olivia Villasenor. Number 34 at forward is Katie Boyle. And number 99 at mid or forward is Harley Parkinson. For the SC Blues, number two at forward or mid is Nikki Fideli. Number four at defender or midfield is Michaelia Bowden. Number five at midfield is Megan Crossan. Number six at midfield is Madison Krauser. Number seven at midfield is Lauren Benner. Number eight at mid or forward is Jennifer Stanley. Number nine at forward or mid is Danielle Spriggs. Number 10 at forward is Mackenzie Akins. Number 11 at mid or defender is Janae Cousineau. Number 12 at defender or forward is Gianna Lowry. Uh, number 15 at forward is Josie Jogway. Number 16 at mid or defender is Nicole Sellis. Number 17 at midfield is Danielle Weatherholt. The keeper is Sammy Joe Prudhomme. And number 20 is Rebecca Foreman. She's defender or midfield. And 21 is Emily Waddell at defender. The head coach is Jeff Pearson and the manager is Monica Bowden. You got to throw in for SC Blues now. And Sereno 94 now. Trying to keep them bottled up in their own defensive third. And into the corner, Sereno 94 again trying to get a uh, cross. And now you got a header there by Paxton. And that ball is sent back up to midfield and out of play. You see there Katie Nakan uh, coming after it. And Akan gets it in. Probably pronounced uh, Nakan. And uh, that ball into Central now on the windy day here 
the Lancaster National Soccer Center. This is the uh, the fields that are on the eastern side. You have the fields that are on the western side and the eastern side. These are the ones that are on the eastern side for the championship. And uh, you have now a stoppage of play, and it's going to be a free kick. Going to be a free kick in a nil-nil match. So far, you've got about... Uh, just a little more than three and a half minutes gone in this match. Sereno 94. Going to try and use the wind here. In a little bit of a way here. Down a central into the ATR box. But no problem for Sammy Joe Houdon. Or rather, that's not Sammy Joe Perdue. That's uh, Tess Rebick who made the save. Sorry about that. And the SC Blues on the attack. And they take the save and no problem there. Nil-nil your score. The Blues retreating back and that ball goes out of play. McKaylee Bowden will throw it in for the Blues. And off the 50-50 ball, now winning it, it's Reno 94. Let's get the tournament games uh, that both teams have played. It's Reno 94 white team. They uh, tie their first game against the Kai Oi Express. Then they beat the Mustang Rampage. They beat the Slammers FC. And in the quarterfinals, they beat La Roca Premier. And, and to get in the semifinals, they beat Evergreen Green and to get here to the final. On the SC Blue side, there was a nil-nil tie against La Roca Premier. They beat uh, the Premier White 4-0. Uh, Shreve Zane's SC Elite Team 2-1. In the quarters, they beat the Slammers FC 1-0. And in the semis, they beat Rio Vista Eagles 3-2. Now that ball goes out of play. And it'll be a throw-in for the SC Blues. All right, take that back. Sereno 94 is going to throw it in. And it is headed out of play in a nil-nil match here. We have about eight minutes gone unofficially on our clock here in the first half. And that was off a header by Akins. Akins in the far corner. However, um, Olslager gets there and drives it out of play. Shelby Olslager drives it out of play. And so now it'll be uh, a Gianna Lowry throw in. Lowry throwing it in, trying to get it to Akins, but Akins couldn't handle her throw in. So now it's going to be a throw in for Sereno 94. Sereno 94 in their own defensive third in a nil nil match. Trying to get that ball up to somebody who could handle it and go down to left flanks. But that didn't happen that time. And so now off the carom, that ball it goes back over to the SC Blues and they push it over towards the near post, but uh, they didn't get really an accurate shot on it that time. And there is a good look at number 13, uh, Tess Rebick, the keeper, who's got her team into the finals. And that ball headed towards midfield. Trying to keep it in a defensive half. It goes across over to the near side. And it looks like uh, Michaelia Bowden will retrieve it. And Bowden will throw it in. You see the wind is blowing uh, width-wise across the field. From the far side touchline to the near side touchline. And in the space, that ball caroms out of play. And the SC Blues will throw it in. And that time it was uh, Stanley throwing it in for the Blues. And she was able to get uh, one of the Sereno players to knock it out. Now in the corner, that's Weatherholt chasing after it. And Danielle Weatherholt, uh, service into the box. Here's Akins. Akins into the central, but a nice job done that time by Sereno 94 to get it out of their own 
Uh, 18-yard box, and now pushing it across midfield strongly there is Katie Boyle. And a keeper, Sammy Joe Prudhomme, comes out and drives that ball across midfield now. And uh, Katie Nakan uh, pushing it up over to her teammate, Courtney Chung. And that ball is across midfield, and it's going to be out of play. Lastly, touched by Sereno 94. The throw in by the SC Blues toward that uh, defensive third, and it is kicked out of play by Sereno 94. And there is going to be a throw in. And actually, it was lastly touched out by the SC Blues. Throw in Sereno 94. Knocked out by Nikki Fideli. And now that ball, ball towards midfield. Katie Boyle trying to go on a run on the left flanks, but uh, dispossessed that time. Now that ball is weaving its way toward the central and running onto it nicely there is Jennifer Stanley. And Stanley pushing that ball against the win uh, towards the keeper, uh, Tess Rebick. And Rebick be able to make the save and send that ball all the way down to uh, Bowden. Bowden chasing after it. Michaelia Bowden has it, and she strikes it off the leg there of the Sereno 94 player, and that happened to be uh, Emily Paxton. And that ball is now struck by the Sereno 94 central player there and out of play on a near side touchline. Nil-nil as you score. And we've got approximately um, 11 and a half minutes gone. We're heading towards the 12th minute of the match. And the SC Blues now. There's uh, Jogway. Jogway getting it to Aikens. Aikens back to Jogway. And that ball is uh, dispossessed and pushed back toward the central. Now here is Weatherholt. Weatherholt on it. Danielle Weatherholt uh, looking for Jogway. And now Aikens try to get to it. But uh, they're able to get to it in the central that time. Defensively, I believe that was uh, Courtney Chung who got to that soccer ball for the Sereno 94 white team. It will be a corner kick. So a corner kick now for the SC Blues out of the Orange County area of Southern California. And that one is at Aikens, but she couldn't handle it as it went behind her. And uh, the defenders stand tall and strong in the uh, space and get it out of there for Sereno 94. And now they have a, a player in the central. I believe that's Boyle, or she was looking for Boyle and her pass had too much pace on it. And now it goes over to uh, Paxton. Paxton now in the corner, beats Bowden, takes a shot, and right there in the six yard box, it is uh, corralled and sent out of play. And it is going to be a goal kick. Actually, that ball must have went past the goal line on the shot. And so it is now going to be a goal kick. Ruth Holm pushing that ball up the field. And now it is knocked out by Michaelia Bowden of the throw in now into the corner. Here is Boyle. Boyle trying to take a shot. And it was going to be a tough one because uh, of the angle that she was at. And now Sammy Joe Prudhomme will go get it and uh, try to get things restarted for the SC Blues. Trying to win the girls under 15. So is the ladies in uh, the white, the Sereno 94 club. The SC Blues have it. And they push it across midfield. All the way down. And the keeper way off her line. She's got to retreat back. And that was nearly a bad decision. That time by Tess Rebick, she nearly put herself in a bad situation in her club by giving up that goal. Rebick could not handle the soccer ball with her hand. She had to handle it with her foot and being very aggressive that time almost cost the Sereno 94 ball club. Yo, okay. Yo, don't worry about it. 
But the Sereno 94 Soccer Club now is going to throw it in. In his girls under one, uh, 15 wide category. Looking for Boyle, and uh, she was dispossessed there in the space now. And that's Weatherholt. Weatherholt pushing it up forward, trying to get somebody to maintain possession of it. Could not. However, it was knocked out by Sereno 94. So Bowden throws it in. And in the corner, Aikens after it, but uh, runs out of real estate. But it, uh, she thought that it was lastly touched out by Sereno 94, but that's not going to be the case. And so now she's going to have to retreat back and do some space there and play defense. For the SC Blues, number 10, as you see there, Mackenzie Aikens. And it's going to be a throw in on the near side touchline off the 50 50 ball to corner. Reno 94 winning it off the 50 50 again. A couple of uh, strikes there by Jennifer Stanley. It's going to be a throw in, though. Emily Paxton, you see there. She of the nice blue cleats. Going to give way to her teammate wearing white cleats. Paxton protecting the soccer ball. Paxton again, still trying to move it along the uh, near side. And that's a, a quality soccer play that she was trying to do. And she got the SC Blues to uh, push it out of play. So now she gets it thrown in and throws it in nicely to Katie Boyle. And Boyle has her teammate strike at Lucy O'Leary. Back to Boyle in the uh, central there. And uh, now it's won by the SC Blues. However, it goes out to the wide to Courtney Chung. Courtney Chung on the move. Courtney Chung along the left flanks looking for a teammate that time. And it was uh, Danielle Leon. And uh, that ball was knocked out instead by the SC Blues. Like there's going to be a substitution. And we will tell you right now that anytime we miss a substitution, uh, we will mention it as they touch that soccer ball. Off the 50-50, goes out of play, the center ref says, and in the way or in the direction for the SC Blues. It will be brought in. And the SC Blues of the uh, lime green color, recognizable amongst all soccer clubs, at least that I've seen. Nobody has that exact same set up in color scheme as the SC Blues do. And very, very interesting that they decided to do that. But it is it has been a winning color for the SC Blues Soccer Club in the ladies category. And that ball is headed down on the near side. Trying to keep it in was Jogway, but she couldn't do it off the 50-50. It's going to go out of play. Michaelia Bowden will chase it down and throw it in for SC Blues. SC meaning Southern California Blues. Brought down in his space there off the foot of O'Leary and now struck by Sereno 94 all the way down to Prudhomme. And Prudhomme drives it out of play past Michaelia Bowden. And on the near side, Paxton is going to throw it in. Nil-nil score here in a championship match. But a girls under 15 in Region 4, the winner goes to Lancaster, Massachusetts to try and win a national championship. On the defensive third, getting to that soccer ball was Gianna uh, Lowry. And Lowry pushed it across midfield. However, winning it back in Sereno 94, there was a touch there by uh, Ali Deron. And then now that ball is pushed back towards Jogway. Jogway in the central there. Uh, Josie Jogway now. Josie Jogway with a head of steam. Jogway to the outside. Jogway, her pass is not, didn't quite reach her intended target that time as uh, they covered well at the top of the box in the space did Cerrito 94 intercepting that soccer ball. SC Blues throwing it in on a far side, trying to get somebody from the flanks, uh, to, uh, the right flanks to make a move. And trying to keep it in that time was 
Nikki Fedeli, and Nikki just couldn't contain a soccer ball, but it went off of a Sereno 94 player. The throw in uh, now headed toward the 18 yard box. Only two in a deep back. They're able to win it, push it up forward a little bit. But here's Jogway up in the air. And a keeper is able to make the save. A little touch that time on the keeper, Tess Rebic. But the center ref did not make a call. You can't do that. You have to be very careful as a striker. That That's the kind of stuff that can draw a card on you. You throw it in. The Paxton over to Boyle off the collision. And they're not going to give it to the SC Blues as a foul in the box. That would have gave up a penalty kick. So the Blues would have loved to have, I mean, the uh, Sereno 94 would have loved to have that situation, but they did not get it. And, of course, on the other side, uh, the alternate scenario would have occurred. So both teams here in this sequence getting away with a little bit here. And Weatherholt, as the center ref allowed him to kind of play on. And coming off her line is Rebic. And Rebic did a fine job that time of deciding when to come off her line and uh, attack the soccer ball. And uh, she did a fine job of it that time as that ball was pretty dangerous in the 18 yard, uh, yard box there. And that ball is pushed out of play at a far side touchline. It's still nil-nil. And we are in the uh, 21st minute of action here in the first half of action between the SC Blues and the Sereno 94 white team. Hope you've enjoyed all the action so far in his championship match at a girls under 15 category. Tess Rebick off the 50-50. It caroms over there in a collision. I believe that was Bowden in the collision, or was it Jogway? And a Sereno 94 player got the worst of that particular situation, that being uh, Sidney Tomlinson. The throw in now will be for Emily Paxton. Paxton gonna go right towards the 18 yard box, but it's intercepted. Here's Josie Jogway. Jogway at midfield. Jogway still on a soccer ball. Jogway on the left flanks here has Weatherholt. And now on the uh, run toward the interior was Weatherholt. And that ball, though, was knocked out of play. And it looks like it's going to be lastly knocked out, though, by Josie Jogway. So Jogway did not do what she wanted to do that time. And uh, getting the better of it was uh, Matty Bradshaw. And it turns into be a goal kick. And that ball is knocked out of play. Now in the 23rd minute of action here in the first half, Sereno 94 will throw it in. Throwing it in is going to be uh, Katie Nakan. Katie Nakan throws it in, and it is uh, intercepted there. And that ball now toward the central. The SC Blues trying to get after it, but Sereno 94 has it as they uh, push it toward the central now. And on that ball is Katie Boyle. Boyle in the central looking for somebody, but nobody was there. And retreating back, trying to get to it, is uh, Nakan. And Nakan did get to it and push it out of play. And the SC Blues now will throw it in, and it's going to be uh, Stanley is going to throw it in. Jennifer Stanley into the corner. And Josie Jogway has a teammate on a goal! Go, 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 go! La! At the corner of the box, and it is 1-0. The SC Blues lead. Beautiful play that time as it was a great service towards the corner. And it is 1-0. SC Blues. Nikki Fideli scoring the goal. So it's been a, good on a game great play so far, there, and as you saw. Cross midfield. And yeah, now a Chung with it on the outside. Getting a touch quickly. 
And Serino 94, they push it across the field and only one lone player there for the SC Blues. And she pushes it all the way across midfield and try to get a run that time by uh, Josie Jogway, but that ball had way too much pace on it. On the near side to throw in. One nil to score. The SC Blues lead. And that ball is uh, driven out of play at a near side touch line. No chance for Katie Boyle to get to that one. It was kind of a turn and strike the soccer ball that time. Boyle now has it, bringing it down toward the central, and then the SC Blues winning it, pushing it into the corner for Jogway. Jogway uh, sends that ball right at Tess Rebic from the left flank, and Rebic able to handle it. No problem there, and gets it started. Out to her right back, and pushing that ball across midfield. And now it is thrown in by Jennifer Stanley. Stanley on the near side with Katie Boyle. Boyle goes down, and a foul, I believe, is going to get, go against Stanley. So Katie Boyle has given her team a free kick from that spot. Down 1-0. Greg G.K. Porter, happy to be with you in a championship game. Uh, the Far West Regionals, the USYS National Championship Series, or Langevinproductions.com. Katie Boyle is going to take the free kick. And that ball is driven all the way down toward the 18-yard box. It's, it's in the 18-yard uh, box and a shot and a deflection and a push all the way up the field that time. Nicely done inside their 18-yard box. They stiffened up, did not allow uh, another strike on it. And actually that free kick, I'm sorry, was taken by Katie Nakan who got a very, very good free kick. Anytime you get into the 18-yard box, you are doing some good things for your, your club. Josie Jogway now getting it over to Weatherholt in the central. Now it goes back out to the wide for Jogway. Jogway now trying to beat a defender there, and it goes out of play. Lastly knocked out by Matty Bradshaw. Matty just trying to protect into space and not allow Jogway to turn. She did a good job that time. However, the SC Blues have their opportunity here. And they ate a couple of headers. And a, a, a subsequent, there was three headers on that play inside the 18-yard box. And it's pushed all the way down the field. And do we have an offsides call? No, we have a player that's down. And that is uh, Lauren Benner went down. SC Blues leading 1-0 over Sereno 94. And they have the drop kick in the central. And now that ball headed toward the defensive third of the SC Blues. They have a player in the space that's able to uh, strike that ball up to midfield. Getting in spaces, finding the soccer ball. That's what you want to do. Uh, you, you've got to be aggressive in a championship game. Every game is different as is every team you play that's different. That ball thrown in now for the near side, struck there by Lucy O'Leary off of the SC Blues player. I believe it was uh, Danielle Weatherholt. And now is Katie Nakan throwing it in, trying to get a teammate to possess it there, could not. Here's Jogway into space, turns, pushes it to Weatherholt. Weatherholt across midfield, but there was two players in his space defensively, and they push it back. Uh, the center back and the right back pushing that wall back. But now they have to retreat back in their own 18-yard box. Jogway trying to get to it, and it's an offsides call. Jogway was offsides that time. And so now Tess Rebic sets it up. Your team down 1-0, and they are trying to get the equalizer on a rather windy afternoon here at the Lancaster National Soccer Center. 
the championship match in a girls under 15 category across midfield. The SC Blues winning it now. Jogway in a central. Jogway is going to change directions and uh, push it back towards Weatherholt. And Weatherholt's pass was deflected that time. Nice job into space by Sereno 94 because Weatherholt figured she would take a nice good shot at Tess Rebick, but they wouldn't allow her to do that as they stood tall into space. And now to near side, you've got uh, Jane Cous Janae Cousineau, and then it goes back toward the midfielders as they continue to say, we're going to be strong in the midfield, the SC Blues, pushing it all the way back towards Tess Rebick, and Rebick gathers it up and draws it for a strike all the way past the center circle and a very good one now toward a attacking third and a whistle and it's going to be a foul against SC Blues. So that time Tess Rebick doing a fine job of working against the wind there and pushing that ball all the way down the field and she was able to get a striker to get a defender to commit and commit on a defensive foul. And so now you have Katie Nukan with a free kick right outside the box. And the end swinger is met, though, by the SC Blues as they push it out of their six-yard box. Nukan trying to strike it again, and uh, she struck it past the goal line. And so now it will be a Sammy Joe Prudhomme goal kick with her team leading 1-0. Nikki Fideli scoring the goal for the SC Blues, the first one of this match. And Perdome now setting it up. Pushing it up, the wind bending that ball as you saw there. Josie Jogway was trying to keep it in against the wind, but couldn't quite do it that time. And now to throw in by Katie Nakan, getting it in, has a teammate there, that's uh, Pascali, and in the space, nice job done that time by Bowden to push it up field, there's Jogway into space, trying to get to it, she could not, as they stiffen up there in the midfield, not allowing Josie Jogway to get to that soccer ball. Off of a few deflections that time, and a header back across midfield by Stanley, but knocked down now by Sereno 94. Going to be a throw in. Throwing it in is Stanley. Stanley to near side. She was looking that time. I believe that was Weatherholt. And now here's Jogway, and she's trying to get to that soccer ball that goes out of play and attacking third off that left flank. And so now it's going to be a throw in. Katie Nakan getting it in over to uh, Boyle. Boyle's strike was intercepted, and now it's over to Stanley, but it winds up on a foot of uh, Pascali. And uh, here's Pascali again. No, it actually is uh, Paxton, Emily Paxton on the near side. Paxton trying to get a through ball there, but Paxton intercepts into space. Paxton in the attacking third, but dispossessed that time. And Weatherold has it, pushes it up to midfield. But they reduce the size of the field straight at towards the keeper. But the SC Blues stand tall and tough into space in a deep back. And now they will give up a free kick. 1-0. The SC Blues lead here in the championship and the girls under 15. The Far West Regionals, Region 4 of the country. Maddie Bradshaw, she of the um, protection on her right arm, the cast, probably a soft cast there. And that ball headed toward the 18-yard box. And it is headed out as they stand tall in the central of the box. Doing their good job there in the deep back. And at central, you really have to Make sure in the central that you do the type of job you're supposed to do to protect uh, your lead, to give your team a chance in any match. 
The throw in here is uh, Katie McCann. And that ball intercepted by the SC Blues, pushed across midfield. And Josie Jogway trying to get to it. But before she got to it, that ball was pushed out of play in the near side. Nicely done that time by Serino 94. But here's Jogway trying to push it over the defender, Maddie Bradshaw. And Bradshaw standing wide and tough in that space. That ball headed into the 18-yard box. But again, stiffening up in the uh, right side defense there. The outside backers doing a fine job along with the midfielders stiffening up here uh, against the SC Blues. Uh, attack from the left flank now that Josie Jogway pushing it towards the six yard box. But again, standing tall and doing a fine job in his central defense, getting over and pushing that ball out of their six yard box. Here's Jogway in his six yard box. Got a teammate, takes a shot, and Tess Rebeck is able to make the shot or make the save. The shot was not as hard as you might have thought it could have been that close to uh, the keeper. And now here's Sammy Joe Perdome who makes a save on a uh, counterattack that is deflected over into her hands. No problem. All the way up the field. Reno 94, keep it in the defensive half. And no problem for Sammy Joe Prudhomme, and she didn't have anybody really that close to her, and that ball was bounced up high enough, and uh, with enough space, she can get to it. It's knocked out now by Courtney Chung as uh, the SC Blues trying to go up the field on that left flank. And the right flank of the SC Blues now trying to Push it across midfield, but it winds up in there on half of the field now. And coming over into space, nicely done that time was O'Leary. However, they got to retreat back in their own defensive third and coming out and driving that soccer ball out of play in their own half of the field there was Tess Rebick. Tess not wanting any kind of attempt, good attempt, at uh, putting that ball in the back of the net by the strikers there. So the throw in now on the right flank and a shot. And it goes past the goal line. A shot that time by Danielle Weatherholt. And Weatherholt got a better strike than the last one that was point blank. As you saw on the left flank and the right side of Tess Rebick. And Tess that time saw a ball with much more velocity coming at it on her from the left side. Down to central. Uh, Bowden can't win it. So coming over, she's got a teammate to protect in that defensive third and drive that ball out of play. And so it'll be a throw in. Throw in again. Katie Nakan. Katie trying to see if she can get one of her teammates to make the, the play that's going to help them Get the equalizer here in the first half. Here down one nil as you have a substitution. Any of the players that come in on substitution, we will mention them as they touch that soccer ball. Going down is Emily Paxton. Paxton trying to protect the soccer ball, but uh, lost her balance there that time. Going to be a throw in. I believe it's Jennifer Stanley off of Weatherholt toward the central with Cousino. Cousino. Finding a teammate there, Aikens. McKenzie pass was intercepted over to Stanley. And now in the center circle as uh, midfielders for both teams trying to gain control here. And now here's Weatherholt. Weatherholt uh, goes out diagonal, finds a teammate there. It's drawn back nicely by Cousino. Cousino strikes it with the left foot over to Aikens and drops it right back off to Weatherholt. Weatherholt and now a shot. And from long distance, and they, uh, again, dealing with the win. And that ball was kind of brought down. Didn't have the kind of velocity that they would have liked on that shot. Here's Tess Rebick with a goal kick. Rebick down to central off of a deflection. 50-50 ball coming up into space was Lauren Benner, and Benner's going to draw the foul. 
on on uh, Ali Deron. So Ali Deron in the midfield there going down. And Deron and her teammates now trying to get it going. They want to go up the left flanks this time. Go over to Courtney Chung. Chung now on her run and dispossessed. SC Blues winning it from their own defensive third. Akins dispossessed that time. And coming up on a nice run from the far side. And that ball is knocked out that time by Rebecca Foreman. Rebecca Foreman coming over into the space and kind of protecting out wide from that defensive third. Not allowing the SC or the uh, Serena 94 to kind of sneak in from that left side. And now that ball is pushed up the midfield, but back into the SC Blues defensive half as here in the last few moments they've had to play defense, but now they move up the field with Akins. Akins on the right flank, gets it to her teammate in the central, making a couple of moves, but then she's dispossessed there in the center back area doing a fine job and taking that ball and pushing it upfield. Got to be strong, as I mentioned earlier, in the center back area. And there's Janae Cousineau. Cousineau pushing it up to the central. And a beautiful play that time by Mackenzie Akins. A goal! Go, 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 Akins being able to slash her way through the 18-yard box and put it past the keeper, Tess Rebick. And it is 2-0 SC Blues. Not to be denied as Akins working hard on the previous play, not allowed to be able to continue on, got the ball out to the wide. They didn't get what they wanted out of that run. And then this time, Akins says, I'm going to be stronger. That's the end of the first half of action of the championship game, the Far West Region 4. The USYS National Championship Series. It is 2-0. SC Blues over Sereno 94. And so you'll see at halftime what the coaches are going to be saying to their players. And this is the last part of it for this tournament. Action set to get underway here in the second half. The SC Blues will be going from left to right and from right to left, Serena 94. That ball pushed over toward the defensive third and you see backing up there is uh, Danielle Leon. And that ball now pushed across midfield. The SC Blues trying to see if they can add another goal to start off this match the second half of this match. They lead 2-0. Leon pushing that ball toward the central there. Pascali, and then she could not handle it. And so it goes back to midfield. Courtney Chung. That ball in the central there. Pascali could not get to it. And it goes over to Olslager. And pushed out to the wide there to uh, Maddie Bradshaw. Pushing it across uh, midfield was Emily Paxton. And that ball goes out of play. On a far side touch line. Going to go get it, Michaelia Bowden. Bowden's going to throw it in. Her team leads 2-0. The first two goals scored by Nikki Fideli and a second goal by Mackenzie Akins. Goes out of play. It's a throw in now. Courtney Chung getting that ball in to Katie Boyle. Boyle for a run down the right side and they converged and were able to have Katie Boyle knock it out of play. So Bowden will throw it in. And is central now. Going after it was Weatherholt. Didn't get to it. Leon now 
Her pass out to the wide and now down to Central. Katie Boyle on her run. Boyle created a situation where the defender had to knock that ball, clear it out of that 18 yard box. Now it's a throw in. And that ball is out of play on the near side. And so the SC Blues will throw it in from their own defensive third along the near side, knocked out by Ann Andrews. Or well, actually, it stayed in for a moment there, but then it finally rolled out. Ann Andrews, number 20, if we mentioned her at the beginning of the match in the lineups as a zero, it should have been 2-0 for Ann Andrews. And now that ball is out to Paxton. Paxton down, going down to Central and couldn't get a player to touch it. Now here's a strike by DeRon and they push it across the top of the net. Actually across uh, the width of the 18 yard box and past that goal line. Didn't even get close to the uh, top of the net that time. And the wind creating a problem. You gotta, as you can see, the way the flag is blowing. You gotta be careful with your strikes from right to left in this match. 2-0, it is the score. The SC Blues leading here in a championship match. Sammy Joe Prudhomme down the central and winning at that time, Matty Bradshaw. And now into space, Pascali. Pascali still on it. Pascali heading toward the 18 yard box. Finds a teammate in the box. And a shot and a save by Prudhomme. But was there a player offside on the play? And yes, there was. There was a player offside that time. And Michaelia Bowden will take it. Bowden going to try to drive that ball all the way down the field. The one with the geometric designs, or at least originally. And of course, it's changed a lot with the case of Nike getting in there, but uh, now down to Central into the 18 yard box. And still will always be remembered with the geometric designs and the world's most famous sport, football, around the world in soccer, uh, soccer being the name of it here in this uh, country because we have another sport called football. And the space there, Deronde out to the wide of Paxton, but dispossessed, and now they have to retreat back. As you see there, Oslager, get it, watching it go back to her keeper, Tess Rebic, and Rebic driving it out of play, or it's still in play. And the space now, that's Paxton, winning it, pushing it up to midfield. Boyle trying to get to it, could not, and it winds up where they reduce the size of the field. They try to push it all the way down the field that time for Jennifer Stanley. And now it's into the ATR box. Rebic knocks it away from the top corner. Almost beaten that time on the far post. But Rebic able to get over there and protect the far post and keep that ball from going in, uh, inside that far post to her left. The SC Blues now on the prowl here. The bending ball, the in swinger, and fighting it at the last moment. That time was Tess Rebic. Not a bad uh, CK. Accomplished that time by Nikki Fidelli. And now in his space, uh, won by Bowden and pushed out of play. Bowden uh, has played well in this match. Throwing it in. As you see there was Courtney Chung and Bowden winning that soccer ball. Now to space the SC Blues again and driving it out of play that time was uh, Fideli. Hey, 
On the near side is going to be a throw in. Courtney Chung is going to do that. Courtney Chung from Liberty High School in Arizona. And on the near side, Chung trying to turn, but was not allowed to do that as standing there tall. Again, Cousineau in the space. And that ball, or rather that was Weather holding the space, and that ball now to the wide side. Chasing after it is uh, Lowry, Gianna Lowry. And Lowry pushing across midfield. But Serena on 94 in his space, trying to use the defender to knock it out, and they did. Nice play that time by Paxton. And now it's on the foot of Leon. Leon trying to get it to her teammate, and that's going to work against the SC Blues. And that ball, that foul, nearly occurred inside the 18-yard box. Just outside the 18-yard box. But a nice chance here for Sereno 94 down 2 0 here in the Region 4 Far West Regionals. USYS National Championship Series. Sereno 94 going to try and see what they can do to try to get it past Sammy Joe Perdome. And they strike it, and it is a goal! Go, 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 By Katie Nakan. Beautiful shot that time by Katie. And as I mentioned on many www.langevinproduction.com videos from the past, that uh, when uh, you see the players develop from a young age and when they get to about this age bracket, they could do some great things. And you just saw evidence of that. A point-blank shot, a bending ball into the far post around the wall that was set up by the SC Blues. And the SC Blues now have their lead cut in half. Weatherhold. Got a teammate in the central. Aikens drawing it back. Has a teammate, a shot, and a save. Tess Rebick protecting the near post. So two to one here in the second half. And if you're the SC Blues, you say, we've really got to tighten it up defensively. We've got to be smarter, though, on some of our plays. And not to, uh, if we're going to foul somebody, we got to keep it from being so close to our net. Obviously, uh, because that can be a dangerous thing, and it was proven that time as the ball you see there knocked out by Maddie Bradshaw. Bradshaw retreating back nicely there to help to protect uh, that uh, keeper of hers, Tess Rebick. And protecting the space, Nikki Fideli, who's already scored a goal, swings it, and it goes over the top of the net. I believe that was Cousineau who tried to bring it down off the strike of Fideli, but just could not do it. And it goes over the top of the net. So Tess Rebick here and her team down by only one goal here in the second half. Two to one, the SC Blues lead here in the championship match. Can Serena 94 come back to tie it up and maybe create a situation going into overtime? Or will the Blues be able to make this stand up for a two to one championship win? As Aikens trying to go at Rebic. Rebic, no problem. Gets that ball quickly out to her teammate Paxton along the right flank. And they get their counterattack going and down into the central there. But uh, and the midfielders now winning it. But moving up there, nicely done on a run from the back. You see there, Maddie Bradshaw 
And Bradshaw still on the run that time. Trying to keep the pressure on Rebecca Foreman. Nice run by Maddie Bradshaw. And sometimes you just have to do that to keep the other team aware that you can make a run. And she made one along the right flank there. Sammy Joe Prudhomme pushing the ball up toward midfield. And off the 50-50 ball, Karim's over to Serena 94, but SC Blues still able to win it. Push it down to Central, and reaching out at the last moment was Tess Rebick as Aikens whiz by her, trying to add another goal and add a two-goal lead. But now they have to retreat back. Here's Leon, Leon in the Central. The Blues stiff it up in their own 18-yard box just in time. As just outside the defensive third, they push it upfield to the Blues. And across midfield, but it's Reno 94. They quickly jump onto that soccer ball. They were trying to work over to Katie Boyle. And it was Katie Boyle's aggressiveness being tough right outside the 18-yard box that created the situation that time for the goal that was uh, that allowed an opportunity to cut the lead in half. Here's Boyle again, and Boyle goes down. And where is it inside the box? No, they wave it off. And so now Boyle going after it again, and the SC Blues kicking it out of play. And there's some folks not really happy on that call by the center ref. As again, buzzing around the 18-yard box, creating a problem. And no call. Boyle, tough on this particular sequence. And it uh, actually turned out to be Maddie Pascali, who was the player that uh, was fouled. And then uh, they got the uh, subsequent goal. So it was Pascali. But uh, Boyle and Pascali have uh, really started to create problems here and coming way off her line. Being able to make the save is Sammy Joe Prudhomme. And pushing it all the way up the field. You know she could do that. Here's Aikens now. Aikens got a teammate. Takes a shot. And on a near post, it goes past the goal line. Lauren Benner coming up and taking that shot. Two to one. Your score. SC Blues leading Sereno 94 in a championship match of the Far West Regionals, Region 4 of the country USYS National Championship Series. Tess Rebick for Serena 94 and a whistle. Serena 94 white team in Region 4. The last three years, they were semifinalists in 2006 and 2007. Again, another semifinal try, not able to get to the finals. And then in 2008, last year, they made it to the corners and didn't make quite make it to the semifinals. And uh, they've also uh, this year been fall Far West Region League champions. This team right here, in the last four years, they've been Arizona State champions, Serena 94 and White. And the different age brackets working their way all the way up to the age of 15 now. Trying to win Region 4 this year as they are in the finals for the first time. This Sereno 94 white team. And it is pushed now where Josie Jogway is trying to chase it down. Jogway from the left flanks, but Rebic gets to it and pushes that ball and takes that ball and drives it out of play. 
And now her teammates can kind of get back and help out in the spaces here in the last uh, few moments. The SC Blues putting a lot of pressure on. And maybe the SC Blues are trying to get that two goal lead that I mentioned a little while ago. Let's see here the throw into the 18 yard box. Aikens. And let's see, was the last thing knocked out by Serena 984? It was past the goal line. And so, as you see, taking it there is Gianna Lowry. No, it was knocked out past the uh, far side touchline. So, Lowry throwing it in and. They don't quite get the opportunity to get a good strike on the net. Still two to one. SC Blues lead as we wind our way towards the end of the match. The championship won for 2009, the Far West Regionals. Bunch of great states out here in the Far West Regionals. Vying for championships here in the Lancaster National Soccer Center. Lancaster, California, up here in the high desert. Above Los Angeles area. And Tess Rebic going to get it started here. Des Rebic from Desert Mountain High, as you see the substitutions that come in, and we'll mention them as they uh, touch that soccer ball. Ball down at Central, and there was a quick touch by Cousineau, and now retreating back is Bowden, and Bowden protecting into space along the uh, right back area. And turning now is Katie Boyle. Boyle can't go any further as covering nicely that time was Rebecca Foreman. Rebecca Foreman showing on either side defensively of the outside defensive uh, back area. She can get the job done. Bowden is her excellent partner also getting the job done. From a defensive standpoint, showing the speed back there, making them a very tough team uh, as they've proven up to this point. But can Serena 94 overcome it here and win this match? Knocked out by the SC Blues. But time is working against them. Every time that soccer ball goes out of play, it works against Serena 94 into the 18 yard box as uh, they retreat back to get it. Josie Jogway was chasing the defender and trying to force her to make a mistake. In the central, as Aiken strikes it, Jogway trying to get to it can't as she was uh, kept from the soccer ball nicely by the defender in the space, a defensive tactic. Up the field, the SC Blues keep it in their own defensive half of Sereno 94. There's Leon though, and pinching in, pushing up from the back was Fideli, or rather that was uh, Lowry. And it's going to be a free kick. SC Blues keeping a lot of pressure on here in these last few minutes against Sereno 94, the all white in this match. A free kick for the SC Blues. And the ball right towards the keeper, but Rebick. Range is over to her right, able to make the save and keep it from going past the line and into the back of the net. Nice save by Rebic. Paxton on the wide side. Her run and throw in and intercepted. Looking for Boyle. And Boyle didn't get it. It's knocked out by the SC Blues. As Serrano 94 trying to get something going from the right flanks. There's Boyle, a nice strike. 
Gets that soccer ball over to uh, Pascali. And now here's a strike down to central of the 18-yard box. Here's Boyle. Boyle in the box, but winning it in the outside back area. And they push it up the field. Would not allow Boyle to have another chance. They converge well in that 18-yard box. Again, covering well for each other, the SC Blues. They've had to do that in this match, especially in the second half. Here's Boyle. She makes a nice move, takes a shot, and a save by Prudhomme. And she backs up towards the line and makes a save. And at far post on her right. Nice strike that time. And again, Sereno 94, when they get a surge of energy going offensively, they can begin to make some plays and uh, individual or otherwise and try and get SC Blues to make a mistake. But right now, the SC Blues still lead two to one in this match, the championship one. As you have substitutions coming in for both clubs. Off the deflection by Weatherholt. And winning it. Sereno 94 up the central. But coming from the deep back that time was Lowry and pushing it upfield. And it went off of Shelby Olslager. So now it's going to be a corner kick. And that was a nice play by Lowry. Pushing that ball all the way down the field. Cutting it off at a point there. Not allowing the ball to play her. She played the ball. And a bending ball looking for a header. And a strike that time is intercepted. It goes back up the field, but plenty of SC Blue players there. And a yeah, through ball. Aikens dearly was able to strike it. But Rebick says, I've got to get to that soccer ball. Got to it just in time. All the way up the field, Bowden now in his space. Playing well, push a diagonal pass over the near side, but nobody there. And so here's Courtney Chung. Chung chasing it down, and we'll get it going for Sereno 94. Not before there's a substitution. The all white of the Arizona visitors down by one, two to one. Here in the second half, if they've got one goal in the second half, and of course that was by Katie Nakan. And the central going after it was Pascali, but couldn't get to it. And that ball as they tighten up, looking for Aikens on a run on the right flank here, and that ball goes out of play. Emily, come on, babe. We need one. A throw in for Sereno 94. Coming up into space is uh, Stanley pushing it toward an 18-yard box. Jogway didn't get to it. And just right outside the top of the box now, here's Leon in space and with space and time. But coming up, cutting out down the size of the field that time was uh, again from the back, Lowry. And we have a whistle and it's going to be a free kick. Free kick for Sereno 94. Down two to one. And the half circle, they'll take the free kick in their own defensive third. Driving it down to Central, but plenty of players for the SC Blues. Almost anticipating that strike down to Central. And they push it across midfield. Now to the wide is uh, Bradshaw. Bradshaw retreating back. Maddie Bradshaw staying with the keeper. I mean, with the uh, Josie Jogway, the striker that time. And they say Jogway knocked it out of play. So it's going to be a goal kick. SC Blues lead two to one. They got their first goal in the first half by Nikki Fideli, and then they got Mackenzie Aikens to score the second goal. And they led 2 0 at the break. But then here in the second half, 
Nakan. Katie scoring a goal on a beautiful free kick. Retreating back. Rebecca Foreman that time getting to the soccer ball. Pushing it out of space, as I've mentioned, her exploits in this contest. Coming over to make a play was Pascali. She was knocked down, Katie Boyle. And now that ball is intercepted. On the foot of Lucy O'Leary striking it, but she missed the net. The Sereno Pro Classic. Sereno 94 winning the Sereno Pro Classic from uh, this year and last year, the 2008-2009 season. The Surf uh, Thanksgiving, uh, they were a finalist out of this uh, past year. And they've really pretty much dominated the Sereno Pro Classic each of the last three years winning it. Coming over into the space, Lucy O'Leary on a 50-50 ball. And Lucy from Notre Dame Preparatory School over in Arizona. And Katie Boyle trying to get after that soccer ball. She of Boulder Creek High over in Arizona. And now on to it, as you saw there, Emily Paxton. Paxton now just outside the box. Paxton trying to make a play. Paxton against Foreman. Foreman and Paxton. Foreman be trying to be careful not to foul. Paxton trying to use her body to push that ball past uh, Foreman. And uh, Foreman and the defenders staying tough on the outside back area, pushing the ball up the field. And now on the outside back area of the near side, you see Michaela Bowden protecting, doing a fine job. Bowden now comes into space. Goes after the soccer ball, aggressive. Kind of like a shortstop. Go to the ball rather than wait and let the ball play them. McKaylee about now, and that foul is going to work against Maddie Pascali and a space. It'll be a free kick. The SC Blues. Leading two to one here in this championship match. The winner is going to the national championship tournament. If I might have said series, I meant to say tournament in Massachusetts for a chance to win a trophy that is about as tall as some of these players are. Is a huge trophy. Here in the 75th year of the USYS campaign. And you see there, Janae Cousineau with time and space directing that ball. Wanted to get things going offensively. And on the near side, trying to make something happen, but pinching her uh, with defensive prowess was Courtney Chung there. But you have a uh, player down, and that's Cousineau. And she is holding her facial area there. And on the near side, running onto that soccer ball of Stanley, getting it over to Kuzino, who stays in the match. Down to Central, and not a problem that time as Danielle Spriggs said, hey, I'll just take a long distance shot. And you say, well, what is that? Does that help you? Yes, it does. If she misses it, it could be a goal. If not, when you lead two to one, it's even further down the field that the team that's behind has to go. So why not make them go as far as they have to go? The more and more time, eight off off the clock in the midfield area now. Spriggs trying to get after it. Spriggs around Boyle, wins it, and gets it over to her teammate, Stanley, who pushed it up the field. Now Cousineau, it deflects to the wide side. As you see, Pascali going after it. On the strike that time of Fideli. But it goes past Fideli, trying to make her move is Paxton. 
but Paxson dispossessed. Paxson, though, gets the carom. Paxson against Fideli. Beats her with the pass, but her teammate couldn't win it. And it's pushed all the way up the field. And here's Akins. Aiken stops the soccer ball, gets it over to Jogway. Jogway just outside the box. Josie Jogway takes a shot, and they protect it in a six-yard box. Defenders getting there just in time to deflect Jogway's shot from getting to the net. In the central, back up the field on the counter, and there is a uh, whistle, and it's going to be a foul. And who's the foul against? There's two players, one for both teams going down. Two to one, the SC Blues lead here in this championship match. Time running out in the championship match. The Blues trying to hold on to this two to one lead as a strong strike by Jennifer Stanley. Here's Fideli turning. And it winds up on a foot of Weatherholt, but it's blocked and pushed out the side, the far side touchline as Fideli couldn't quite get to it. Knocked out by Sereno 94. However, it's going to be a throw in by the SC Blues. Gianna Lawry trying to get a player in that box to possess it, stay on side. Ball goes out of play on the near side. Uh, Chung is going to throw it in. She throws it in, trying to get her teammate to run onto it. It goes out of play, cannot. So it's thrown in by Stanley. Jennifer Stanley trying to get Weatherholt. Or one of her other teammates to run onto it. That ball struck right there in the central, as you see there. They stand tall at the top of the box to get it out. But here's Bowden reducing the size of the field as the SE Blues still continuing and running on to it from the back. Nicely done. You see Lowry pushing it towards Aikens. But here's a strike and a goal! Go, 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 go! Danielle Spriggs in the space. And Spriggs puts it past the caper. And it is three to one. Just a fine play as Mackenzie Akins deflected the soccer ball and the momentum of Danielle Spriggs. It was like perfect setup and Spriggs just took her full momentum and a strike of that soccer cleat and driving that soccer ball to the uh, left and no chance that time for Tess Rebick to get to it. And that ball is knocked out on the near side. Here's Chung is going to throw it in. And Sereno 94 White, who as I mentioned a while ago, have this particular team has gotten, the highest they've gotten is to the semifinals. This year they get to the finals of this region four and they find themselves in a bigger hole now to try to win the championship. They have progressed though, and that is a thing they can say to themselves as they uh, try to go on next year and try to win this region if they cannot accomplish it here in these last moments of this match. Chung has that ball knocked out of play, throwing it in the corner. And retreating back is Bowden off the 50-50 ball. Who was it knocked out of? Was it Bowden? Yes, it was. So now Chung going to try and see if they can get a teammate to get a good strike as they have on a set piece. That's the only time they scored. Katie Nakan scoring it on that set piece try. Maybe they could try and get him to create a, a, get a, commit themselves towards a foul and try to get another set piece try. But numbers on the right flanks here. Pushing that ball up the field, the SC Blues. Here's a strike now of Jennifer Stanley. Not able to get anybody to uh, run onto it, but it was knocked out. 
As the Blues knocking it out on the near side. The throw in off the 50 50 ball. And who was it off of? Was it off of Weatherholt or Leon? It was off, of, or Ann Andrew, rather. And um, it turns out to be it was off of the SC Blues. The throw in here. Kuzino strike all the way down the field toward a defensive third and past the goal line as Jogway chases it down. Three to one here in the championship match. Time running out. Got to try to get some things going in a hurry and try and get a goal and cut it down by one goal. And you see there Gianna Lowry, who's played a fine game in this match, going down. and An ankle injury or foot injury of some sort. They're going to come out. Fresh player in, Tess Rebick now. Pushing the ball up the field. Leon trying to get to it, cannot. In the central, going after it. Deronde can't get to it as uh, Josie Jogway just kind of pushed it toward the keeper. And now here's Fideli intercepted by, uh, I believe that was Bradshaw that intercepted it now, cutting it back as Benner. Her left footed pass is intercepted in the space there on the near side. Spriggs and her attempted pass, her cross was. Uh, Intercepted that time by Connie Chung, pinching right there in the space. And if I said Connie Chung, it's Courtney Chung. <laughs> Must be thinking of the reporter, Connie Chung. That ball off of a shot past the goal line. And Tess Rebick running it back, knowing very full well the time is against her and her team. Going against the wind and the wide side now. And an offsides call as they thought they had something going on the right flank that time with Katie Boyle, but offsides is the call. And so now it is going to be a free kick from their own defensive half. The SC Blues pushing it up. The strike there, a binner. And her same number, Courtney Chung winning it, pushing it across the space. Chung now has to help out on the near side to try to protect as trying to do something there was Aikens. And even if Higgins doesn't do anything, she eats time off the clock. The SC Blues closer and closer now to winning the championship. In a girls under 15 here in 2009, the Far West Regionals USYS National Championship Series. <laughs> Bowden uh, drives that ball off of one player for Serena 94. However, it's still in their own half of the field. As trying to go get it is Cousineau and his space. Now they get a quick touch that time by Pascali. Pascali again pushing it forward, working hard, gets it to Boyle. Boyle turns and deflected in the central as they tighten up. However, they have a player from the back on the run and it winds up over to Paxton. And Paxton's shot is saved by Prudhomme. Paxton just turning and taking it a shot. And you get to a point where you start to have to do that kind of stuff. You can't waste time. If it's on your foot, you got to try to find a way to direct it at that keeper. The throw in. In the central. The strike. Weatherholt. Pushed out to the wide. Spriggs now in his space, but winning at that time was uh, Ali D. Ronde. Now out to the wide. 
for Sereno 94. Try to work to Boyle, but Boyle didn't get it. It went to Stanley, and she just pushed it all the way down the field. Tess Rebick. And there is a double whistle and a championship of Region 4 goes to the SC Blues. They are going to go to the National Championship Tournament in Massachusetts. A great tournament by the SA Blues, and they are the champions winning three to one here against Sereno 94 White, the finalists. But it's not their day in Region 4 to win a championship. It's the girls of the SC Blues. Congratulations to them and their coaching staff. Take care of yourself. God bless, and we hope to see you next time. Save this one on a hard drive. Bye now. Do we have uh, all parties from all teams at this point? All right, all the moms and dads. All right, I hope we have all the dads because we want to wish you a happy Father's Day today. At this point in time, I'd like to welcome our finalists in the Region 4, uh, from Region 4, from Arizona, Serena. Ladies, would you join us on stage, please? Yes, please join us on stage. Presenting awards will be Jason Vanacore, president of the Arizona Youth Soccer Association, and he's helped by Dave Simeone.
Coach, would you come back? We'd like to present you with a plaque as a finalist in the event. And would you like to say a few words? Not necessary. Thank you, ladies. Oh. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's my very great pleasure to present our champion in the 15 girls division from California South. Blues, get on up here. <laughs> Presenting the awards today will be the president of uh, Cal South, Mr. Greg Falk, and he will be assisted, assisted by Mr. Dean Gillian. Coach, we'd like to present you with a plaque as our champion. Would you like to say a few words? Uh, first of all, I would like to thank a, a great opponent, Sereno. They're a tremendous team and uh, awesome, awesome game. And uh, this being Father's Day, I didn't think I would be here because uh, I'm wearing this wristband because at 3.30 a.m. on Thursday, my wife called me and uh, I had to drive down and uh, we had our third child. So this is uh, a great week. But this all started in uh, Big Bear training and uh, going through excruciating pains and work and getting fit and becoming one and this is uh well girls we have climbed the mountain and we are at the top here yeah. 
And I feel fortunate to be a part of this group and a part of this club, the Southern California Blues. They are an amazing group of coaches and families and players. And to be standing here with these girls and, and representing our club here, uh, I feel uh, very fortunate. And, um, and God is looking out for us and the soccer gods are looking out for us. And so uh, a thank you to Cal South and the Far West Regional uh, this is an awesome competitive league and Southern California where we come from is just a tremendous uh, training ground for these girls that are growing up into young women and have great futures. Uh, so congratulations girls, you are the champions.